So in today's video, I wanna focus on getting your photos from your camera onto your computer in what I think is the best and most efficient way possible. Hi guys, my name is Steve Gerrard. I'm a photographer here in Montreal. I shoot weddings and bands and portraits and all that kind of good stuff. But today I wanna to focus on very important part of the process, which is getting your photos after a shoot from your camera onto your computer, onto a hard drive and backed up safely and efficiently and in an organized manner. Now, the first thing I wanna tell you is that I have Canon 5D Mark III's, which have dual slots. So that means I have an SD card and a CF card in here. And every picture that I take on a day is backed up to both cards. I tend to shoot on big cards. So I'm shooting on 128 gig cards at the moment. And that tends to last me for a whole wedding day or any other kind of shoot that I do and everything's there backed up twice. So when the shoot's done, everything is on my camera, but I have two copies of everything. And then the next thing to do is make sure that I separate these cards. So I will take one of the cards, usually my CF card out of the camera, leave the SD card in there, and I'll put my CF card in a little box like this. And then I, that will go in my pocket and then the camera can go in the car, in the case, wherever. And then I've instantly got two copies of every picture that I've taken and they're in two locations as much as possible at that point in the day. And then I'll come home or I'll drive back to the hotel if I'm traveling. And then before I even go to bed, I'm gonna back everything up again. So once I get back from the shoot, even if it's been a really long day and I get back in the early hours of the morning, which happens a lot, I am gonna be backing up my pictures again before I even go to sleep because I don't wanna to go to sleep thinking I've only got two copies of everything. I wanna make sure that I've got as many copies as I can before I even go to sleep. I'm gonna sleep better for, for a start. So solid state drives are my friends, especially when they're this size and this is one terabyte on this size, so it's more than enough. I can take that very easily on planes and stuff like that. I can keep it in my pocket but most of the time I just have these at home. I'm gonna back it up onto the SSD as soon as I get home. And these are nice little rugged kind of hard drives. They're really fast too. So I'm gonna show you the process of how I get them from the card onto the SSD. The other thing is I never put things onto my computer directly. Everything's on a separate hard drive because I don't wanna fill the hard drive on my computer because the more you fill the hard drive on your computer, the slower Lightroom is gonna become and the slower other applications might become because you're just taking up space on your computer. So all the files go onto SSDs and other hard drives and I'm gonna show you how I do that now. So the first thing we're gonna do obviously is take the cards out of the camera and carefully get them into the card reader ready to back up. This is my 128 SD. And we are ready to go. So here we are on my desktop and I'm now using my Mac on the, uh, there you go, you can see me there. Now, I haven't just added one SD card, as you can see from this, I've added one SD, so Steve's SD1, Steve's CF2, CF1, and over here, SD2. So there's actually four cards connected to the computer at the moment. Now, obviously, the thing is, if you copy just using Finder from all the cards, then every time it says you've already copied a file, for example, here we've got SGP0012. If it tries to copy that from the CF and the SD card, it's gonna tell you that you've already backed it up. But sometimes what happens is when you've got different folders like this, if you can see my arrow there, you might have SGP12 there, and I think in here we've got SGP12 in another folder as well. But if you look at the thumbnail on this one, SGP12, and then in this folder, SGP12, look at the thumbnail, you'll see they're actually completely different pictures. It's just that the camera has chosen to name them that. So if I try and copy both of these pictures, and maybe I actually want, but not in this case, but maybe I actually want to make sure that both of those pictures are backed up. If I try and copy both of these using folder, I'm gonna get a message telling me that I've already copied it. And that is 
where you can run into problems because you you might think that you've backed up an image when actually it's another image with the same file name that you've backed up. So to avoid that, I have a process using Photo Mechanic. Now, most people that I know that use Photo Mechanic use it for culling, but I actually use it just for ingesting. My culling is in a completely different software now. I used to use Photo Mechanic for years, but now I am using this new software, which I'm going to talk about in another video. Um, but for now, we are going to use Photo Mechanic to ingest all these cards and make sure that we get all the pictures copied across and nothing gets missed. So I'll show you how I'm going to do that. Okay, so here we are in Photo Mechanic. So I'm going to show you how I get my cards ingested. And if I go up here, we can go to File Ingest. And hopefully here it's going to pick up all the cards and how much is on them. So you can see CF1, CF2, SD1, SD2. And over those four cards, we have a lot of pictures around about 230 gig of images that we want to back up. So the first thing we're going to do is click on all of these cards and the incremental ingests will only copy new photos that you haven't copied already to a hard drive. So we definitely don't want that because we want to make sure that everything that's on these cards is backed up. And then here we're going to click on merge disks into same destination because we want to make sure that everything that's on these is going to go into the same place and all be together. So now here you can see it's saying source directory structure. That's if you want to set separate folders for different images, but we don't want to do that. We want to copy all of this into one folder and then copy photos directly into primary and secondary folders. So you'll see here we can pick a destination for our primary folder. Now let's find our SD, which is here. And let's make a new folder, which we're just going to be called YouTube. I don't know why we called it that, but let's just call it that. And then let's put a folder in here, which just says originals. So this is all the original images I've copied that I've taken on that shoot, whether it's a wedding or something else. Now here we also want to add a second destination. So for this one, I'm going to put it onto my Seagate hard drive, which is my big hard drive that's always connected to my computer. And I'm going to put it into this folder, which I always put images into before I called them. So here again, we're going to call it YouTube. And we're going to, again, make another folder called Originals. So here you can see it's going to back it up to the SSD and then it's going to back it up to my Seagate hard drive and into the to be called YouTube originals. So the next part of the process, and this is very important, is this little section here, rename ingested photos as. So to avoid them being copied across with just the file name that came out of the camera, we're going to completely rename everything before we transfer everything from the cards. And this is a nice little trick that I got off my friend Adam Johnson. So I just want to give him some props because here you can see you've got the year, month, day, hour, minute, second. It's basically giving you a file name made up of the exact second that the image was taken, which means that we can put them in time order after we've ingested them. So I'm going to show you how to do that if I get rid of all these first. Now we go down to variables, which is here. And then we're going to scroll down until we find the time. And you can see all the different kinds of timestamps that you can add to it. So we're going to build the file name from here. So we're going to click on year four. That'll give you a four digit year. So 2021. Then we're going to go up to the month, which is here. And we're going to click on month zero. Now, the reason you click month zero, actually double click month zero rather than month is because you want that zero before any single digit month like February, it will give you zero two instead of just two. And then we're going to go to day. Same thing there, get the day zero. You can see it jump in over there on the file name. And then we're going to go to hour. And we're going to choose the hour 24. So we get the 24 hour clock. And then we need minute, which is right below it. There's only one option. We want that. And then obviously, you can probably guess second. And then we can even go sub second just to be super accurate. And then we've got the whole 
thing happening right here. And then from there, we're gonna add on just the original file name to the end of this. So if we scroll all the way up, we can find file name base. So here it tells you file name of photo without the extension. And we're just gonna add that onto the end. So there on the end, you can see file name base. And worst case scenario, if you copy these across and you've got an, a corrupted image, you can find it on the card still because you can check what the original file name was and go and find it on your card. Now below this section, you've got these uh, options, open contact sheets in the background. We don't really need that. Erase source disks after ingest. We don't really wanna do that because it's gonna erase all your cards and I'd rather be in control of when I do that. And unmount source disk, we don't really need to do that. And then we can just hit ingest. And as soon as I hit ingest, that is basically gonna take every file off these four cards. It's gonna copy it to two destinations, which we've set up. It's gonna rename it with the time that it was taken, plus the original file name, and everything is gonna be in order of when it was taken with the original file name on the end. So let's hit ingest. Okay, so here you can see that we are getting these little progress bars, just the same as you would in Finder, telling you how much has been copied. This card obviously hasn't got as much as the other three. So that's gonna be finished quicker. And this can be a long process, especially after a full day shoot or a wedding. So normally I would start this going and then maybe go to bed. And by the time I get up in the morning, hopefully everything has copied across safely. But if I was doing that in Finder, then I would get up and I would look and you might not know if there'd been a problem with the copy. You just keep your fingers crossed or you get an error message, but you don't really know which card there might have been an error with. So as an example, if the hard drive that you were copying to got full, then Finder would just stop and maybe give you some kind of error message, but it's really vague and it wouldn't really tell you what the problem was. But with Photo Mechanic, what's gonna happen is these yellow boxes that tell you basically that everything is copying across fine at the moment. If there's an error, one or more of them will go red and you will get a little message down here telling you exactly what the problem has been. If you get up in the morning and all of these boxes are green, then you can give yourself a little high five because everything has copied across nicely and you know that everything is safe and everything you can see the files are being renamed with the date followed by the time and then the original file name which is exactly what we wanted and then we can put everything in order so i'm just going to let this carry on going and we'll come back when it's done okay so now it is the next day i uh, left these overnight and you can see one, two, three, four cards all copied. We've got green lights on all of them, which means that everything's copied across, everything's been renamed, and there was no issues whatsoever. And if we go in here, let's just get rid of Photo Mechanic. And now you can see we've got this folder here with the originals and 15,203 items in, and that's on my SSD, on my Seagate hard drive, we have another folder here with 15,203 items. So all good, everything's backed up, we know it's good. And the next thing to do will be to cool the images. Now 15,000 images is way more than I would normally have from a shoot. From a wedding, I would normally have somewhere around five or 6,000 images maybe, depending on the length of the day and the kind of wedding it was. So the next thing I'm gonna do is call those and that will be in another video coming up. Now, the very last part, but another very important part is my online backup. Now, there's various companies that do this. Backblaze is probably one that you've heard of a lot. But I actually use a company called Live Drive, and you can see up here I get this drop down box from their icon. I can go into my control panel, which is there, and if I go to settings, and here you can see that I've set Live Drive to automatically back up this folder, which is where we put one of our backups from Photo Mechanic, which is to be called on the Seagate drive. And you can see this little wheel is going around, which means it's automatically working. I didn't have to do anything. It's just worked out automatically that something is going on and there's new files in that folder. So it's gonna start uploading those to the cloud automatically. And I don't even have to 
think about it as soon as i put something on that hard drive in that folder it's going to start uploading so it might take a while but eventually i will have an extra backup which means i've got this backup i've got the two hard drive backups and then everything is still on the cards and i'm not going to delete those cards until i have cooled from the to be called folder so that's going to be the next part of the process and that'll be in the next video now live drive is it costs me 20 dollars a month give or take but i actually have unlimited storage which means that at the moment i have well you can see here i have 11 terabytes of storage already used and i can just keep backing up whatever i want from my hard drives to the cloud which is just really good peace of mind it means that if my house blows away in some kind of Wizard of Oz scene then I know that I can still get the images from my live drive backup which is really really nice to know. Now one thing you may have noticed is that all the images that you're seeing in my photo mechanic are actually in black and white which may have confused some of you but I always shoot with my previews in black and white so on the back of my camera I see everything in black and white and there's a good reason for that. I'll explain it in detail in another video, but I've been doing it for years. So Photo Mechanic is taking the information from the JPEG preview part of the file, which is just in black and white. All these pictures will come in color as soon as I get them into Lightroom. So you'll see that when we get around to the editing video. So there you go. That's the first part of my process. And if you found any of that useful, I'd appreciate a little like below. And if you subscribe, you'll be able to see the next videos where I'm going to be talking about cutting and editing and the whole delivery process and every single part of my workflow in detail. So that's going to be coming up. And if you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, I will see you on the next one. Cheers, guys.